I'm here a little bit early. We're just going to wait a couple minutes to get started on time and allow a few people to join. Um, very excited about today's conversation. Um, hey guys, Lee Shan and Lakshmi, how are you guys doing? How have you guys been um, doing today? <laughs> I'm so excited about this um, live because we're going to wrap up what we've been talking about for all of December. Hey, Stephanie, how are you? <laughs> Glad you could join us. It's going to be a really rich discussion, a very quick discussion. I really want to give you this last piece of key information about how to overcome the number one dream killer that you have because we're stepping into the new and people are very motivated, especially because it's not only a new year, but a new decade. Um, I'll repeat this again later, but for next week, I have something very, very special for you guys. I will be traveling next week, but we will still have a video and it is a very powerful video on the numerology of 2020 so that you know what to look out for, what energies you're actually working with for 2020. So um, you can start to be more intentional about the things that you are trying to accomplish in life here. So just to... Uh, let you know what's coming up and you guys now like to start on time so let's see Ooh, we got like one minute left and we're gonna get started how's everybody's week i know we talked about the full moon last week how has that energy impacted you guys we're halfway into that energy we have another week to go that energy usually lasts for about two weeks and then it starts to dissipate in um, preparation for the new moon, which is going to be an eclipse, that's going to be very, very powerful as well. That information, I think, will be on the blog. I haven't quite decided yet because I really want you to have the 2020 video. So I am going to go ahead and get started. Like I said, today we're talking about how to overcome the number one thing that crushes your dreams. We have some new people in the group, so I just wanted to let you guys know who I am. My name is Yashika founder and CEO of Yashika's Intuition. And I started Yashika's Intuition because I believe that in order to really create true success in life, there are tools at your disposal that help you live up to your full potential. And those are through um, high performance, spirituality, self-mastery, etc. And so that is what I like to bring to you. I like to bring to you, I call it intelligence meets intellect because there's two parts and if you can marry those parts together and makes you more powerful in your manifestations and the things that you want to create in your life hey robin how are you um so anyway you know who i am and now i want to talk about um something new before we get started last weekend i dropped the better life bundle because some of you are like i said are really motivated about moving into 2020 but i want you to move into it very intentionally know what you're coming up against and try to overcome the pitfalls and the obstacles that may have kept you a little bit stuck when you moved into 2019 or coming out of 2019 and so that better life bundle is two master classes that can help shift you as far as your mindset, as far as connecting with yourself so that you can live life with a greater purpose and then being able to move forward in multiple different ways to um, actually assert things that are gonna help you in your relationships as well. So if you want to um, see what that's all about, you I'll leave a link somewhere for you to be able to find that. But it's on my, um, it's on yashikasintuition.com and it's called The Better Life Bundle. It's over 50% off right now. Um, so we're talking about self-discipline today because to me, if you wanna overcome the number one dream killer, you need to start to develop self-discipline. Lack of self-discipline is the number one thing that is going to kill your dreams. It's not a lack of motivation. We've been talking about that for the last two to three weeks that motivation is not what's stopping you and if you think that you have a lack of motivation you are sorely mistaken self-discipline is the ability to control your feelings and overcome your weaknesses and it's the ability to continue to stay on track with whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish despite 
your temptations to have you abandon that path, that track, that goal that you're trying to accomplish for yourself. Um, and if you find that you're lacking motivation when it comes to moving forward in life and accomplishing your goals, remember all of December was about you, you not lacking motivation because what happens is usually you may have a passion, you may have a spark, you may have something that lights up inside of you to get you started, but that is not motivation. Motivation, true motivation kicks in after you have taken action. So if you think that you're lacking motivation is because you haven't taken action and you are probably measuring the wrong things. That's the second thing that we always talk about. So if you think you're lacking motivation, you're wrong. Motivation kicks in as a result of you taking actions. So you take action, you find, um, you actualize a result. It could be a small result. So again, you have to really look at what you're measuring when you're starting to take action on your inspirations. And through that initial um positive feedback, then you get motivated. And that motivation leads you to develop stronger self-discipline. That stronger self-discipline allows you to actualize uh, more and more wins, which allows you to be more and more motivated. It is a cycle that continues, but what starts the cycle and what fuels the cycle is not motivation. It is self-discipline. So if you are not accomplishing the goals that you set out for yourself, if you are moving into 2020 with this inspired energy around actualizing other goals that you set for yourself, then the number one thing that you need to think about is self-control, controlling your impulses so that you can learn to master areas in your life that you want to change and start to create a better life for yourself. And it is simple as that. And what I want to share with you, this was maybe almost 10 years ago. Uh, this girl invited me to run the Munich Marathon. I love to run. I'm more of a sprinter, but I do like longer distances, maybe up to about five to eight miles. I'm good with that. Um, but I was like, okay, I'll try this marathon with you. And so we trained and we trained and we trained. And if for any of you, if you're runners, leave a comment, let me know if you've ever ran a marathon, but to start to build up the endurance and the stamina and the fortitude to be able to run for such a long time takes a lot of training, a lot of commitment, a lot of time and a lot of energy. So I agreed to run this marathon with her, not because it was something that was motivating to me. It was something that I, I committed myself to saying that I would do. It was a goal that I created for myself. And because I told you I, I live what it is I want to do and what it is, who it is I want to be, that's just once I set a goal and I'm setting it with somebody, it's a non-negotiable. So... You know, day in and day out, I would have to get up and I would have to run miles and they would just increase by the day, by the week, all the way up to, I think it went up to like 30 miles. And while I'm doing this, I'm not motivated to do it. There's no passion inside of me to do it. What fueled me to wake up when my bed was more comfortable, when my chair was more comfortable, when doing anything other than running these 10, 20, 30 miles a day was more comfortable was the fact that I was being disciplined and I was honoring a commitment that I made to my friend and I made to myself. And so again, these hard goals that you see people accomplishing, um, these feats that you see people doing that you wish you could do, they're not out of your reach. The number one reason why you are not getting them is because you are chasing the wrong thing. And when you start to strengthen your self-discipline, that is what fuels the rest of your successes to kind of fall in line. Um, so I want to talk to you a little bit about what your life could look like if you have a lack of self-discipline, because maybe some people don't know what I mean when I say you lack self-control, you lack impulse control, you lack the ability to say 
what you um, really want to say, mean what you mean, and walk the walk, walk the talk. The first thing is you may notice that in your life there is a lot of negativity. Negativity is a perception, but if you are perceiving the things that happen to you to be less than desirable, then that's somewhere where you may want to examine how you have, um, how's your self-discipline in that area? Because we've all been through stuff in life. We've all been through challenges and tribulations, and we can sit here and we can pull out what we've been through and try to compare them and see who has had the tougher life, but that's not what I'm talking about here. But I want to tell you that whatever you've gone through, as you start to move forward in life, if you continue to frame the experiences that you've been through in a negative light, it negatively is impacting your ability to move forward. And that is stemming from a lack of self-discipline around your ability to rein in your thoughts and retrain your thoughts. We talked about this a couple of videos back when I was telling you how, even if you don't believe that you can achieve something by believing less than, by believing otherwise, by taking a negative spin on the things that occur in your life and letting that be your story, you are neurologically training your brain to synapse, to fire, to um, create pathways, to continue to have that be the easier path for your brain, for your mind, for your um, thinking to work. And that overall negatively impacts you. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not gonna get real deep into that. Check out the NLP video that we did a few weeks ago. I went all through that and then I also talked about how you can start to rewire your brain in a different way. Um, some of you need to listen up because you, you're not going to like what I have to say, but if you, well, a number one thing, a number two thing, not number one, a number two thing that may be a signal that you are not without motivation, but you're lacking self-discipline is that you are just lazy. This is what laziness looks like. And uh, you can um, give me a like or give me a heart if you think that this is you. You sit around thinking about how nice your life could be or what life could be like if you did the things that you want to do. But when you really um, think about the day in and day out around your actions and your habits, they resemble someone, something. Okay, let me say that again. They resemble someone that wants nice things or wants changes in their life. However, they don't want to do the work to get them. So it'd be nice to be in shape. It'd be nice to save money. It'd be nice to go on this trip. It'd be nice to read this book, to go back to school, whatever it is. All you do is like Mr. Nice, Mrs. Nice. You just, everything is nice, but you ain't doing crap about it. And it's because you're lazy. And so I'm not saying this to make you feel bad about yourself, but I want you to acknowledge the truth about where you sit because a lot of it is not all these lacks is that you just plain don't want to do anything other than what is comfortable to you and that is just plain laziness this next one is pretty deep and um you may have to sit with this for a little bit because it could bring up not recognize it right away but some of you the way you can tell that you may have a lack of self-discipline in your life is because you haven't forgiven yourself for things from the past, or you think that if you try something new that you'll fail. A lot of people have a fear of failure, or a lot of people have this fear that they've said that they were going to do these great things in their life, and because they haven't done the things that they said that they would do in the past, they feel like they can't move forward and start to live a life more intentionally and more, more goal-oriented, and so it stunts your growth, it stunts your path, but guess what? Everyone that is successful has failed, and not failed once, and not failed twice, we have failed at multiple, multiple things. I mean, like I've tried so many things um, and failed, but if I had given up on myself and if I had not had the strength and the determination to pull myself together and just continue to move forward, even when I failed or embarrassed myself 
or fell flat on my face, I wouldn't be where I was today and I wouldn't be accomplishing um, even greater levels than I created for myself. But um, so I guess what I'm trying to say here is if something that you want to try doesn't kill you, you're going to be okay. You're going to overcome it. You're going to learn. You're going to grow. Um, becoming successful is all about personal development and personal growth. And I don't know anybody that hasn't become very successful, that hasn't gone through challenges, trials, tribulations, and missteps. And I also don't know any successful person that has decided because they have experienced those things that they want to stop. People that want to get the most out of life and live life to the fullest and live life to its highest potential are purposely looking for ways to stretch and to grow and to be challenged because they know that is what's going to be the most enriching experience in life that's going to um, have you live a life that is more extraordinary and more in alignment with your passion and in more alignment with your purpose. So if you find that you've having you. If you find that you're having trouble forgiving yourself or um, having a fear of failure, it's almost like that self-discipline will kick in if you had it to help you see that no matter what the outcome may be, which you never know what it's going to be some of the time, you still take that inspired action. It'll, it'll help carry you further than if you relied on motivation or you try to um, work through these things on your own, thinking that you're going to feel a certain way about what you want to accomplish. And once you feel that certain way, you will be able to move forward more successfully. It doesn't work like that. Some of y'all are addicted. So let's talk about that. <laughs> um, a lack of self-discipline can show up as you you letting your dopamine receptors control your life. So that means any little temptations, any little um, addictions have more control over you and your actions than your willpower. And I'm not even going to say willpower in your self-discipline. So you're like a drug addict. And when you are in a space like that, you don't want an empowered life. You don't want a motivated life, which comes from living a self-disciplined life. What you want is to let something else have control over your mind, your body, your soul, your spirit. And, and you freely give that away because that's a choice. And so for all of you that may be a little bit on that side of the coin, lacking self-control just because you, um, have let yourself, I'm not going to say like true addiction, but to where you um, are not willing to find ways. I, yeah, I'm going to say addiction. If you're not willing to find ways, whether that be psychological help, medical help, whatever, to overcome those addictions that start to take over your dopamine receptors, then again, you still are making a choice that you would rather give your power over to something else or someone else rather than live an empowered life. And then the last thing that I want to talk to you about that could be a clue that you shouldn't be searching for motivation. You should be searching for self-discipline. And that last clue is that you have a lack of purpose in your life. You don't know how to set goals. You don't know what you want out of life. You have, and you don't have to know specifically, but you just have no idea of what you want out of life. And you find yourself floundering and trying to gain footing and make shifts. Um, you may notice that that could be because you have a lack of vision for your life and a lack of purpose for your life. And that is directly tied to self-discipline. Because if you have some self-discipline, you would be checking in with yourself. You would be checking in with your heart. You would be checking in um, with yourself through a regular practice, creating a connection to yourself creating a connection to what you believe to be a higher power, wherever that comes from, whether you believe that to be inside of you, um, through God, through the universe, whatever that is, but you will be regularly checking in with that 
And because you are doing that, you will be able to hear the voice of guidance to help you to have more direction in your life and more purpose in your life and more vision and, and be able to set goals for yourself. I'm not going to get too much into that either because I also have a free course that guides you through exactly how you can learn to restore that inner connection with yourself, restore that um, spiritual connection so that you can be able to hear that guidance so that you don't feel like you're doing it alone. You're able to give some things over to God and have faith that you have something that's going to help guide you in the direction that you need to go in order to actualize your highest and best good. But some of you don't even have the discipline to be able to sit there and connect with yourself and connect with spirit to be able to hear that voice. And so you feel like you're floundering, but that's still a choice. You have a whole free course here that I made available to you to help you do it. How many of you have done the course if you feel that way? So if you have resources and tools that people are providing you and you're still not willing to dive in deep and do the work. You have workbooks, videos, um, tips, tricks, everything that you need to start to be successful and you're not doing it. It's because you choose not to do it. So the question that I want to leave you with um, is, do you want to carry all of that into 2020? Do you want to start a new year and a new decade carrying the same crap that you know is holding you back, carrying the same stuff that you know is not working, carrying the same stuff that you know is holding you back from living the life that you want to live. And a lot of the stuff that you are carrying is stuff that you have been carrying not for, since 2019. You've been carrying it since 2018, 2017, 2016. This is years of crap that you continue to intentionally carry. And I say intentionally because you are aware of what you are doing and how you are living, but you are still not wanting to better yourself. What is stopping you from living a better life? Um, I know I wouldn't do that. I know when I was called to the fire feed to the fire and I had to make the choice, I finally chose myself because I was sick of living a life where I felt stuck, where I felt lazy, uninspired, purposeless. Um, just like I was going through the motion with no true vision or a true legacy for myself. And I don't want that for you. So I'm, I'm sharing this with you in hopes that your motivation for what's coming up for the next year is not just based on this hype or not just based on a few weeks or a few months of this false motivation, but you actually setting intentions in your life to live better, be better and do better make this a better year and a better decade than you've had in a long time because you could have a life that had a clear mission, had a clear vision, had a clear plan and had clear goals that were actually helping you move forward in life. And you could have a life where you had a belief system where you believed in yourself and you knew that even if you didn't know how things were going to turn out, that you had everything that you needed inside of you to be able to overcome everything that life threw your way and that you had the power to be who you wished you could be, who you wished you could become. If only you were able to step into your power, step into a disciplined routine and own what it is that you want to claim for yourself. And you could also have a successful life for yourself. You're not going to accomplish an extraordinary life without hiccups, without downfalls. And it's almost like that saying, the, the higher you rise, the harder you fall. There's high, big highs and lows when you choose to live a life of purpose. And when you choose to live a life outside of the box and a life that's better than 99% of the world is trying to live. But Successful people are always leveling up. And like I said, they're always taking risks because in those big risks come big rewards. And you could have that for yourself if you will learn how to tap into a more self-disciplined life. And you could also have better relationships. Because self-discipline makes you more confident and makes you more aligned with your goals and your values and where you are going in your life. And because you are more confident and because you know where you're going, you start to align with people and situations and opportunities that are for your highest and best good and are more aligned with you. And so the people 
that you develop because you have a stronger character also have a stronger character that is more connected with your values. And that increases your ability to attract abundance in your life and have re relationships that are free from the drama, free from the BS, free from that fake love that people feel when really what they're doing is bonding through trauma and have relationships that are is built on mutual respect, true, unconditional love, honesty, trust, all of that. And so with that, I am getting off my high horse. This is the end of our December series on how to find motivation um, and what you really need to start to develop in order to really, like I said, start to move forward in life and create success in your life. I have the replays up they are in our group, but if it's easier to find them all in one space, I will go to the blog on yashikasintuition.com and you can find them there. Um, I have them in one post about um, how to find motivation, but we all know that's not really what we were talking about when we dug a little bit deeper, right? And so again, I just want you to know I have a whole bunch of tools to help you reshape your life, reshape this next year for your for your life, reshape this next decade for your life, and to live a life that you can finally and truly be proud of instead of just faking through these New Year's resolution emotions. And it all starts again with what I said, that free class. So if you haven't taken that class, take that class. Um, I, I strongly believe in that class because it's there to help you connect with yourself, um, especially if you feel like you've lost a part of yourself or you don't hear that voice or you don't hear that guidance or you don't feel that purpose. And through finding that connection with yourself, it helps you learn how to be um, guided toward a bigger vision and a bigger purpose for your life. And, and, you know, I, I don't know why you haven't taken it. If you know that you want a better life for yourself, there's no excuses. It's free. It, um, it's five videos, very easy to digest, workbooks, actionable tips that you can put into place immediately. The same stuff that I used back in the day when I was just starting to get my life on track, the same exact stuff that I use now proven to be effective, the same exact stuff that I use and that I share with the clients that I work with one-on-one. -on -one. So you get it all right there for free. I'm going to leave it at that. Do you guys have any questions? Normally you don't. Um, you, you guys know that I leave this post up in the group. So if you do find that you need to digest a little bit and you have questions afterwards, just make sure you let me know. And I always come back and check and answer. But otherwise, I will leave you with that next week. I'm already giving you a preview. Numerology for 2020. If you really want to step into the new year and you really want to know what's going on the, and how to work intentionally with the energies that you are given. So you are in alignment with it because, right, if you're in alignment with the energy, you're able to manifest and move forward on some of the things you're trying to do much faster. You'll have that video um, next Thursday. However, there will not be a replay. So if you want to get that video, it's going to be only up for a little bit and um it won't be available because that's actually going to be something that, that most people will have to pay for, but you'll be able to get it free and preview it if you, again, set intentions and goals and have some self-discipline to commit to a little bit of time for yourself on Thursday evenings to dive into that video because it's going to be very valuable. I usually, I usually make a blog post about it, but this time I'm going to do a whole video for you. Okay. So I will talk to you guys next Thursday.